we know that uh, chronic GVG is unfortunately still the, um, the leading cause of uh, morbidity and mortality nowadays, uh, especially late morbidity after transplant. And especially with rising recipient age, uh, increased use of peripheral blood stem cells. Um, and also we today know much more about uh, pathophysiology. Uh, of uh, chronic GVHD, um, we know um, that it uh, presents, um, it can present as any uh, autoimmune uh, disorder, so uh, it's uh, um, very uh, challenging to um, take care of these patients. Uh, and usually we should suspect it uh, anytime um, um, any change happens in the first year uh, after stem cell transplant. Uh, the best way to approach these patients is to, um, and this is I think the consensus of all the experts uh, included in the management of chronic GVHD, is to approach this patient um, in a multidisciplinary uh, way to involve a range of uh, specialists, organ specialists, because this is uh, the only way that we can uh, manage these patients uh, in the best uh, in the best way. Uh, and also, uh, we are lucky today that we have um, many available tools, uh, to, both for the um, diagnosis of chronic GVHD because sometimes that is not uh, so simple. Everybody who has ever seen uh, NIH consensus uh, GVHD criteria uh, document, uh, which is today a standard uh, for diagnosis, uh, no, it's not, uh, it's not always very easy because we have uh, diagnostic features, but we also have uh, distinctive features in some organs that then need additional confirmation. So today, fortunately, we have uh, many available electronic tools which can help us uh, to do um, um, a very well uh, chronic GVHD evaluation to timely diagnose it. Uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is a multidisciplinary uh, approach and help from the other uh, specialists. And uh, the, the third thing is also uh, additional help of uh, e-tools to uh, stage uh, the GVHD as well, because we know that a mild chronic GVHD will not require systemic treatment, while moderate and severe mostly will. They will require it um, most frequently for one year or uh, or even more. Uh, but fortunately, what we uh, know for our patients that the medium of uh, immunosuppressive treatment will be uh, approximately of uh, two years. And uh, eventually, um, uh, if we uh, handle it um, uh, in the best possible way, the um, tolerance between, uh, between the recipient and in a patient will finally uh, emerge and our patients will be, so, so say, say uh, cured from uh, chronic uh, GVHD. This is why this is a point uh, when we talk about uh, the treatment and the follow-up uh, follow of chronic GVHD. Um, in any uh, time of the treatment, it is very important to treat these patients uh, with at least uh, immunosuppressive uh, um, uh, treatment possible because most of these patients die from infectious uh, complications. Uh, and uh, also uh, to do regular evaluations of these patients. So um, uh, they should be checked for GVHD at every clinical visit, but uh, uh, all the organs uh, should be checked in every three to six months, especially in some special considerations as uh, in lung GVHD, uh, because lung GVHD is one of the most severe forms of chronic GVHD, which is hard to treat and is um, uh, also often diagnosed too late. So this is why um, the, the suggestion is to do um, pulmonary functional tests irrespectively of patient symptoms every three to six months in order to recognize GVHD of the lungs um, in time. Uh, and then uh, so do, doing by doing this regular uh, evaluation, every three to six months. This, this offers us a chance to calibrate uh, immunosuppressive treatment um, 
also in time and regularly, uh, and to just uh, uh, be sure that these patients are not treated with too, uh, la too, uh, too little immunosuppression, but with not too much uh, either. Because as I said, uh, immuno infections are the, uh, the most um, important cause, uh, cause of death of these patients. And this is also uh, what I wanted to uh, pronounce, uh, to highlight uh, as well, that uh, it's important that uh, all these patients um, are followed for their immunological reconstitution, that they get uh, according to that immunological reconstitution that they get adequate um, prophylaxis for bacterial uh, as encapsulated bacteria for pneumocystis um, to get uh, antifungal prophylaxis um, uh, in, especially in patients uh, with chronic GVHD on steroid treatment. And also what is very important and what we sometimes forget is to vaccinate this, these patients uh, as early as possible because a, a standard um, or just a regular clinical practice in these patients was to um, not vaccinate them while they uh, have a GVHD, while they have immunosuppressive treatment. But today, and according to the new um, SL guidelines, uh, we know that these patients uh, can be, uh, can be uh, vaccinated very soon after transplant, uh, as long as they have more than 50 CD4 uh, four cells. And uh, this should be uh, started as early as possible in order to decrease uh, immunosuppressive treatment. Also, um, there are some types of chronic GVHD, uh, which are maybe even the most, uh, most frequent uh, types. And this is uh, IGVHD, mouth GVHD, uh, uh, and then genital GVHD, uh, which uh, do not um, sometimes uh, have a use of systemic immunosuppressive treatment, even if they have a severe, uh, severe form, because the NIH consensus would say that you should treat uh, with systemic immunosuppressive treatment uh, all patients who have um, uh, more than grade three in one single organ, but sometimes in, uh, in organs as it is eye, mouth, and genital, Systemic uh, treatment um, is uh, um, is not um, of such use, and it can have many many uh, side effects. So it's very important to develop um, uh, uh, so so called aggressive local uh, local approach, and this also requires uh, the um, involvement of many other organ specialists, especially in eye uh, GVHD, where you cannot manage eyes without uh, a dedicated and ophthalmologist. Uh, for example, or, or gynecologist, and these are, uh, and this is also very important to beside uh, because today we know that we have uh, more than uh, twenty clinical. Um, trials, especially in steroid refractory chronic GVHD, because today we have only established uh, first line, which is steroids, uh, and then pl plus uh, cycling, um, um, calcineurin inhibitors. But for the second line, if there is a, if, if we have a steroid refractory patient, we, we do not have a standard. We have more than 20 clinical trials, which are uh, trying to evaluate um, um, the best care for steroid refractory GVHD patients and only one drug which has been in, in, uh, approved in this setting and that is uh, ibrutinib, uh, ibrutinib and even though it's a drug approved in this setting it's not um, a, a common um, co so common still in clinical use because of the rarity of this uh, disorder uh, and um, complexity uh, many many new drugs uh, are being evaluated um, so, um, beside of all, because beside of uh, all these uh, systemic drugs, I want to get back. It's important to uh, to um, also develop uh, local therapies uh, because um, local therapies can uh, can have a very very. Um, can be very effective uh, without exposing these patients to the side effects of uh, systemic immunosuppression. 